Hello, welcome to An Old Man Running. I'm here today to talk about my Saucony Ride 15 shoes, which I've just got to 150 miles. And I think it's a good time to talk about these shoes because the Ride 16 is now out. That's available for $140. And the Ride 15s, as a consequence, are now available on sale. So you can get the Ride 15s for about $85 running warehouse or even $95 on, on the Saucony site. And so a key question to ask, is it worth that extra money going to the Ride 16? Now, I can't speak too much about the Ride 16s. I don't have them. I've done reading, as I'm sure you will. But it feels to me that Whereas the Ride 15 was a bit of a significant step change over the Ride 14, significantly lighter, different landing feel, generally more comfortable, that the changes between the 16 and the 15 are much more iterative. Uh, they're the same weight, they have the same stack height, they have the same drop. You know, it's certainly worth having a second thought about do you want to pay the extra money to. So I'll focus the rest of this on what I like and don't like about the Ride 15 and also compare it to some other Saucony candidates for easy running shoes that I've tried and have. The Triumph 19, Freedom 3, Freedom 4, the Convara. Talk a little bit about how this shoe fits with the Endorphin Speed 3 and even touch on the endorphin shift a little bit to give you a flavor for where this fits in and what I think about it overall as a shoe. So a few details, significant weight reduction from the previous version. I've seen estimates of around 8.7 to 8.9 ounces for US male size nine. Stack height, 35 millimeters with an eight millimeter drop to 27. This looks like a much thicker stack, but it's a little bit of an optical illusion because there's a band here of white that isn't part of the midsole foam. So the midsole foam stops around this point here. So the shoe looks as though it's a higher stack than it is. And it certainly doesn't land or feel like a super bouncy, super cushion trainer. If that's what you're looking for, this isn't the shoe for you. But what it does have is a bit more cushion than other Saucony shoes like the Convara and the Freedom. And that little bit extra makes it a more versatile shoe. I'm very comfortable using this regularly for easy or recovery runs up to a distance of about 12 miles. And then you start to feel the shoe a little bit more and I, I've, I personally start to get a bit uncomfortable after about 12 miles. Nice looking shoe. I like the contrast between the black and the white. Other thing I like is the uh, the pores here are very wide as you can see on the upper and uh, what I like about that living in a hot climate is it never gets too hot compared to the Saucony Triumph 19, for example, which is a shoe sometimes I get super hot in and I just can't use in the summer. The lacing has a little bit of a loop here. You can see it on either side. And that certainly does lead to a tight lockdown, which is great. I've never really used a runner's knot in this and I use it on a lot of my other shoes. So nice lockdown with it. And a great landing that I really like here uh, the shoe encourages you, I feel, to land in the mid and the front here, a nice big wide front area for landing. And that's shown up for me in the wear pattern of this shoe compared to a lot of my others. Most of my shoes wear really heavily in the heel area, but these are pretty even wear. So this is 150 miles, bit of wear there and in the middle and then here, but very much an even wear throughout and, and an excellent wear. I think this is great for 150 miles. The insole, like a lot of the Saucony shoes right now, the insole is really good, nice and thick, solid. I think it may even be the same foam as they have in the midsole here. Great insole. I, I sometimes wear insoles in shoes, but uh, I, I wouldn't with this. It's, it's really comfortable when you're running on it. And one other benefit of this shoe that I found, because it's not like a super bouncy, super thick foam shoe, 
is that I get a bit of ground feel with it and I feel like I get a bit of a response like when I want to push the pace at the end of an easy run. Sometimes if I'm running, say, a, a six mile tanky type run and I want to push the pace the last two kilometers, I certainly feel a good response from this shoe. And what do I mean by pushing the pace? Well, for me, my tempo pace is around 450 per kilometer. I certainly wouldn't use this as a race shoe or as my regular interval or tempo shoe, but as I'll cover later, I think it complements the endorphin speed three in that regard and i think the two shoes together make a really good combination let me now talk about some of the other shoes in the saucony range that this kind of falls in the middle of and give you a little bit of a comparison to those let me show you in comparison to the triumph 19 first here's my triumph 19s similar mileage maybe another 30 miles on the triumph 19 the Wear is great on the Triumph 19, no complaints about that. But if you'll notice, um, you can see where I'm wearing it here. I'm wearing it on the heel. From a cushioning perspective, I can run much further in these than I can in the rides. But they are heavy, and so, you, you, you know, you encounter problems with all shoes as you get to further distances. And for me, it's more the weight than it is anything to do with the cushioning level as I start to get to longer distances. Just by comparison on the soles of the two shoes, general look. There, I know there's a Triumph 20 out now, and from what I read, that is a step change over the 19, so definitely do your research. If your preference is for a shoe that has more cushion and you don't mind the additional weight, then I think, Triumph may be a better consideration for you. And I, I've certainly enjoyed running in this shoe. It's just that this has come to replace it for me. Now, let me show you kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum is the is the Convaras. So the Convara is much lighter shoe. It is, I think it's a lower drop. It's four millimeter versus an eight millimeter drop. It's a snappier ride as well. And so with me saying all of these things, it sounds like I have a strong preference for the Convara. And it certainly was my favorite shoe for a long time, but I need the extra stability and support that this gives me. And yet when I pick it up on pace, it still reminds me a little bit of the Convara. So I think as, a, as an older runner needing that, uh, additional support this shoe gives me that you can see here the significant difference between the two shoes in terms of you know your ground protection particularly if you focus at the front of the shoes here you can see how much thinner of a support level you're getting from the Convara. I would never tell anyone not to buy Convaras. You know, I, I do love them. And I use them in a very specific way. I love to run with them on the beach. One of the reasons for that uh, is I, I ran on the beach with these yesterday. Um, actually, it was a long walk. I did a long walk on the beach with these yesterday. And with the size of the pores here, they just let the sand in all day long. And these shoes do not work on, on, on the beach, even if you're running on the wet, hard sand. Canvara 12s, these are fantastic for running on. For a long time, my go-to when the Canvaras were just a little bit too harsh for me were, were these Saucony Freedom 3s. This is kind of a brand new pair. I, I had another pair that I used for a long, long time and, and loved. There's a massive difference between these two shoes. I don't know that I would call it massive, but it's a different ride. This is a very low to the ground shoe the freedom compared to the ride 15 and so it's definitely a different feel you do feel the ground contact a bit more it does have a touch extra cushion compared to the Convara. but for me recently when i've been worried about my ankles and my stability and also i've been running a lot in tired legs as i ramp up uh, some strength training i've been doing i just feel this gives me a little more comfort than the Freedom 3s do. I really do enjoy the Freedom 3s. One of the problems with the Freedom 3s is that you can't really get them anymore. They've been replaced by the Freedom 4s here, which I'm just not a fan of. These are the same size, and yet the Freedom 4 looks like a significantly bigger shoe. 
I don't think it's particularly heavy, but I think Saucony see it much more as a kind of cross-training type shoe, and I think they've just brought out another freedom that is very much in that cross-training vein. And and I never feel like I'm in an out, an out running shoe when I'm in this Freedom 4. Freedom 3 replacement is my Ride 15. Finally, let me talk about the difference between this shoe and the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. I, I, I got the Speed 3 touch before I got these and I was using it as a daily trainer as well as for tempo runs and it worked fine for that but again when I'm especially just now recovering from injury and I'm focusing also a lot just now on making sure my easy runs are very easy from a heart rate perspective I think that's a better training regimen for me and these shoes are just a bit more supportive of doing that they're not pushing you to run faster. They're a bit more comfortable and steady. In terms of daily easy running, these have replaced the Speed 3s for me. Uh, Speed 3s, fantastic tempo running shoe, uh, intervals, all of that kind of use. And I certainly would always use these over the rides for that. For my marathon training, I would you know, have those as my recovery and an easy run shoe, short easy run shoes out of these as my interval and tempos and I would use another pair of shoes for my for my long runs and for my race pace runs. So nice combination, thoroughly recommend this. So just in conclusion, uh, comparing against those other Saucony shoes, this is the Triumph 19. Obviously it's a lighter ride, it's more nimble, it's a more natural forefoot base stability than the heel type stability on the Triumph 19. Uh, Triumph 19 certainly will get you further than these shoes. Freedom 3 and Freedom 4 and the Canvara also, this shoe provides more cushion, doesn't have the same pep, but a more versatile shoe for easy runs, especially if you pair it with something like the Speed 3, which provides all the peppiness and more that the Canvara and the Freedoms can offer. Comparison to the Shift, I think the Endorphin Shift is a clunky, awkward shoe that tries to mimic the speed roll technology that the, that the Speeds and the Pros do in a daily training type package, but I just don't think it comes off. Finally, in comparison to the Ride 16, that's your call, but it's a significant price jump for what appears to be an iterative change. And if I was going to replace these shoes with another daily trainer, I would buy another pair of Ride 15s.